lighthearted program created by Rio Grande. Los Angeles Police calling all cars. Attention all cars. Broadcast 222. Information wanted may be stolen on a Nash Capital A. License in one column. 8 New York 4109. This car may be found in the Harbor District. Hold and notify the Central Homicide Detail. That's all. Rolls and quits. When you hear the sharp cry of the siren, what does it mean to you? That there's been a robbery. That there's a big fire somewhere. That there's an ambulance follow-up. Yes, it can mean any one of those things. And remember, when you hear that sound, that Rio Grande cracked gasoline is up there in the front line every minute, leading police cars in the attack on crime, giving wings to fire engines in the battle against fire and speeding ambulances on errands of mercy in the saving of human life. Well, Dr. Lindsley, that certainly justifies Rio Grande's position as first in public service. Yes, and Rio Grande cracks not only is the overwhelming favorite with the officials of cities and counties, but the officials of the state of California and your federal government also specify this finer gasoline for their emergency automotive equipment. In the face of these facts, I don't see how people can buy just any gasoline. In my humble opinion, Doctor, Rio Grande offers the most conclusive proof of quality and the most sincere appeal for a gasoline buyer's loyalty. Very truly spoken. And if I'm talking to anyone who hasn't tried Rio Grande cracked gasoline, all we ask is that you do yourself the favor of trying just one tankful and make a fair comparison of your car's performance. Drive into the red and white Rio Grande station in your neighborhood for the first of many a tankful of Rio Grande cracked. The gasoline that you will find delivers police car performance. It is our pleasure to welcome again to Calling All Cars, Chief James E. Davis of the Los Angeles Police Department. Chief Davis. Good evening, friends. One of the most essential elements in law enforcement work is complete cooperation between all agencies charged with the upholding of the law. Tonight's story is a case in point. Not only did all law enforcement agencies concerned work in closest harmony, but the cooperation of the United States Navy was of the utmost benefit and help. This case also stands as a record of swift court procedure. For five days after the criminal was brought to trial, he had received sentence but I shall reserve further comment on the case for the end of the story. Our story opens in a modest little home in Manhattan Beach on the eve of Armistice Day. You'll be careful, won't you, Raymond? Oh, sure, Mother. Don't worry about me. Have you plenty of money, son? Well, enough to get by on tonight. I won't be spending much tonight anyway. Are you going on a party? No, I'm just going to run up to town a while, see some of the boys from the office. Mm, I don't know why, but I have a sort of feeling that something's going to happen. Why? What could happen, Mother? Oh, there's so many accidents and everything. Oh, don't worry about me. I'll be okay. They won't bring me home in an ambulance. <laughs> don't forget your scarf, Raymond. Oh, I won't need it. Now, you just put that scarf on. You know how cold and foggy it's been the last few nights. You'll be out late tonight, too. All right. Fuss budget. So long. Raymond, come huh? back here. What's the matter? Since when do you run off without kissing your mother goodbye? <laughs> okay, passion flower. <laughs> there. Goodbye now. <laughs> goodbye, son. Come home as early as you can. Next morning, as a thwarted sun strove to break through the low-flying clouds, Detective Lieutenant Leroy Sanderson approached a group of officers gathered about a grisly object lying beneath a giant pepper tree. Hello, Sandy. Where is Geezy? Taking a day off. George Hill's here on the case with me today. What's the trouble? Somebody reported a dead body. We're waiting for the coroner. I take it that this object under the canvas there is a body? That's right. Who reported it? Tell the name Edwards. Early Edwards. Hmm. A couple of youngsters found the man lying here and flagged Edwards. He called Georgia Street, and we hopped out here. Who else came out with you? Shattuck and Murray. They're checking the neighborhood for anybody who might have heard a fight out here. Uh -huh. Whose handkerchief is that down by his feet? Don't know. Figured it might be his. Dropped here before he was killed at any rate. Yeah? Yeah. 
See the blood on it? Spattered from an angle. Yeah, I see it did. Blood on his hat, too. Think he had it on when he was hit? Well, looks that way. Had quite a struggle, judging from the way the ground's torn up. Uh Uh-huh. The ground was torn up before the man was killed. How do you know? Blood on the leaf mold everywhere. Uh, I noticed that. Hey, looks like he tried to get up after he was hit. Yeah. I wasn't sure at first that he was dead. That hand holding onto the limb there looked like he was getting up. Well, are you sure he is dead? Well, he hasn't moved since I got here. Here comes Tom Russell. You'll soon find out. Hi, Sandy. Hello, Melina. Hey. Uh, what have we got here? Murder. Uh, murder, huh? Yep. Well, let's get this tarpaulin off. Yeah. Looks like murder, Sandy. Yes, judging from the way he's battered up. Looks like that piece of concrete did the job. Mm Mm-hmm. That one and the one down by his feet. Doesn't make sense that one man did this, do you think? Well, not likely that one man used two chunks of concrete. No. He's been dead about six hours, Sandy. Yeah? Well, that'd put it between three and four this morning, wouldn't it? Yeah. Here's his wallet. Thanks. Hmm. Three one-dollar bills. Uh Uh-huh. Here's some small change. Fifty cent piece and a dime. Looks like robbery wasn't the motive. I'm not so sure. Why not? Well, just because a man has three and a half in his pocket doesn't mean he mightn't have had more. Well, that's true. Maybe that's the reason the money was left. Maybe the bird who did this wanted us to think there was some other motive. Such as? That's what we're going to find out. Meantime, who is this fellow? Well, according to his cards in here, his name is Raymond McLaughlin. 361 Manhattan Avenue, Manhattan Beach. Got a driver's license? Yep. Right here. No car around here anywhere. Well, maybe it was stolen by the bird who killed this fellow. Well, that's robbery in a big way. We'll have to find out about that, too. Hey, are you birds through? We'd like to get going. Got all the pictures we'll need? Yeah. Go ahead, then. All right, Tom, bring the stretcher. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're safe in saying that two men did the job. According to the wounds on the head, I'd say one of them knocked him down with his fist, then both of them went to work on him with these chunks of concrete. But why? Well, we'll know more about that when we find the car and... Find out how much money he had. Meantime, try that little piece of concrete in that hole over there. It fits. Uh-huh. So does this piece in this hole. He wasn't killed until he reached this point. But how did he get here in the first place? Well, now you've started to ask questions again. Uh, here comes Hill back. Wonder what he found out. Not much, if he didn't do better than we did. Well, Sandy, where'd you find out? Not much. Just identified the victim, that was about all. And worked out a lot of theories. Apparently nobody in the neighborhood heard anything of importance except the Mrs. Bander. Uh-huh. She said her husband was coming home about 1.30 last night. They crossed uh, this vacant lot on that path down by the corner. Said they heard men's voices and several thumps, but nothing else. Did they investigate? No, probably figured discretion was a better part of valor. Well, they might have saved this man's life if they had Russell told me he probably lived a couple of hours after he was beaten up. Well, too late now. Did this woman say anything about seeing a car? Yeah. Said they saw a car parked on Westmoreland, headed north. See anybody in it? She said not. Headlights were on. See what kind of a car it was? Didn't know, except that it was a coupe. Well, not much help. Except that we know McLaughlin did have a car out here. Let's take a run over to Manhattan Beach and have a talk with this boy's family. Thank you. 
Go ahead now. Well, Tell me what happened. I think uh, we should, Sandy. I can stand it. No. We found your son this morning murdered. Murdered? At least we have cause to think so. Do you think you can give us any information on the friends of, uh, of his, Mrs. McLaughlin? No. Do you know anybody who might have borne him a grudge? No one. Raymond was well liked by everyone who knew him. I see. He had lots of friends, of course, just as every boy his age. But they were all nice people. Mm. Most of them work with him. Could it have been jealousy over a girl? Mm, I, I don't think so. He had a few girlfriends, but he wasn't serious about any of them. He felt he wasn't in a position to be married. You see, he had been taking care of me and his younger brother and my daughter, at least helping us all out. Do you know if he had any money with him last night? Why, yes. He took his wallet off the dresser just before he left and put it in his coat pocket. The pocket inside, you know. Are you sure of that? Yes, I'm positive. He always carried his wallet there. Well, we found it in his hip pocket. Mrs. McLaughlin, what makes you remember the way he carried his wallet? Why, we used to comment on the way it made his coat bulge out. His sister and I were always trying to get him to take it out of his coat pocket. You don't know how much money he had last night? No, I... I don't. He got paid Friday. He gets paid on the 10th and 20th, and he had given me the usual amount I need to run the house. Yes. I guess he had the rest of his money with him. He hadn't had time to go to the bank and put his money in his savings account. Well, we only found three dollars in his wallet. Oh, he had much more than that. What kind of a car did your son drive? He had a Nash Coupe. One of those cloth-top cars with windows. Cabriolet Coupe? Yes, that's the kind. Uh, you know the license number? Why, I have it written down on a phone book right here. Uh, here it is. 4N... Four one oh nine. I'll just take that down. Do you know any place where your son went regularly? Club or anything like that? Well, I, I've heard him mention some place on Third Street, eight oh eight something. Eight oh eight club. Yes, that's it. Well, we'll check on it. <laughs> checking every possible lead that might show them the solution of this brutal murder. From the employers of the dead man, they learned of friends and acquaintances, but these leads proved futile. Sanderson's partner, Lieutenant Ray Geesey, now joined him in questioning the proprietor of the 808 Club. Tell me, Oran, you know a fellow named McLaughlin? Sure, he's in here every few days. You know anything about his friends? No, not much. Who does he come in here with? Oh, different ones, usually in the party. You see him Saturday? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, yeah, I remember. He was in here early in the evening. Saw him talking to a fellow named Gibson, sailor, from the Nevada, I think. A sailor? Sure. Mac used to be in the Navy himself. Knew lots of the boys and their girlfriends. Used to meet him in here. You see him talking to anybody else that night? Let's see. Seems like he was talking to a fellow named Douglas. Yeah, that's his name. No chance of your knowing where this uh, Douglas guy lives. Why, it? sure. I cashed a check for him. I always get addresses on him. Now, wait a minute. He's kind of nervous, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Here we are, 18 South Burlington. And Gibson's on the Nevada, eh? Yeah, and the Nevada's at sea. Target practice. Well, nothing to keep us from giving Mr. Douglas a once-over. <laughs> Time, police chemists had officially confirmed the theory that the pieces of concrete found at the scene of the crime were the lethal weapons. From San Pedro came the report that McLaughlin's car had been found, devoid of fingerprints. Police experts found, however, two sets of prints which had been overlooked in the haste to wipe off the damaging evidence. These were checked, classified, and rechecked against police department files, but no clue was given as to the identity of the men making the prints. Then the battleship Nevada returned to port, and Sailor Gibson was brought in for questioning. Now, look, Gibson, we want some information about a fellow named McLaughlin. You're supposed to know him. I do know him. When did you see him last? Oh, about a week ago. You sure it wasn't Saturday night? No, sir. Oran over at the 808 Club says he saw you talking to McLaughlin there on Saturday night. No, he's not. I was in there looking for Mac, but he wasn't there. You know Mac very well? Sure. We were shipmates during the war. You know much about him? What kind of people he ran around with? Not much. 
Just the sort any fellow runs with. Yeah, men and women. Sure. Why? You know anybody who might want him out of the way? No, not a soul. Mac was a fine fellow. Everybody liked him. Mm-hmm. You ever see him with much money on him? Not much. Twenty-five or thirty dollars, maybe. Are you sure you don't know of any enemies he might have? No, sir, I don't. Well, Sandy, here's a report on Gibson's fingerprint. Match? Nope. Doesn't look like he rode in McLaughlin's car Saturday night. Say, what is this? Of course I didn't ride in Mac's car Saturday night. I haven't even seen that car for a month. I haven't seen Mac himself for a week. What's the big idea? Take it easy, young fella. You just got out of a murder rap. Murder rap? Who? McLaughlin. He was killed Saturday night. We're trying to find the man who did it. We're convinced now that you didn't. You can go. Well, at least you might have let me know what you were after. I might have known something that would help. Well, do you? No, I don't. Uh, but why don't you check up on McLaughlin's best friend? Who's that? A fellow named Douglas out on Burlington. Andy, I told you we ought to do that. Take it easy. We'll get around to him. He's on his way down here now. Huh? How come? I asked the captain to send out for him. He'll be here any minute. Oh, speak of the devil. What did I tell you? Hi, Gibson. Oh, hello, Doug. You two know each other? Sure. Well, in that case, you'd better beat it back to your ship. Yeah, we want to be alone with Mr. Douglas. Okay. I'll be seeing you. Maybe. Now, Mr. Douglas, do you know Ray McLaughlin? Why? Why? Yeah, why? He's dead. What? Yes, dead. Why, why he couldn't be. Well, why, I saw him the day before yesterday, Saturday. What time? Oh, about 8.30, maybe 9 o'clock. Where? Sixth and Main. What was he doing? Why, was... No, wait a minute. If Max has been murdered, I, I don't want to get mixed up in this. What's wrong with you? You're white as a sheet. Come on, spill it. What's on your mind? No, I, I want a lawyer. I don't want to say anything more. Lawyer? Yeah, I, I don't want to get mixed up in this. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Take it easy, fella. No, I won't talk about it. You won't talk about what? I don't want to have anything to do with this. Well, you're going to whether you want to or not. Now, look here, Douglas. You've told us that you know Mac. Gibson tells us you're a close friend. Yeah? And we feel that you know more about this than you're telling. I don't want to get mixed up in this, I tell you. Yeah, I know that. Now, listen, we've got a common interest here. We want to solve this case. I know you want to help us catch the murderer, don't you? Well, don't you? Yeah. All right. Now, it's clear to us that you and Mac traveled pretty much with the same crowd. Now, starting with Saturday morning, November 10th, I want you to tell us exactly what you did with relation to McLaughlin. But you use anything I see in the trial, if there is one. Naturally. That shouldn't make any difference to you, Douglas. That is, if you're innocent. I didn't have anything to do with this. Well, we don't want to take unfair advantage of you, but remember, we'll check up on everything you tell us. I want a lawyer. Okay, if you think you need one. Did you kill Ray McLaughlin? No! Now, sit down, Douglas. Doug, it's obvious that you're holding out on us. Either you're shielding someone or you're directly involved yourself. We know that at least two men attacked McLaughlin. Were you one of them? No, I don't know anything about it. Oh, yes, you do. Come on, sit down. Now, tell us about it. Now, look. I didn't know Mac. I, I saw him Saturday night. But I'm not involved in his death. I I'm afraid I'll get the same thing as, as Mac got. Why? Because I know who killed him. You what? Well, who did it? Well, I, I was a little hasty in saying I know who, but... I know what. You know what killed him? Yeah. Well, so do we. He was beaten to death with a chunk of concrete. Two chunks, Ray. Well, what's the difference? Difference of one man. Oh. There were two men. Sailors. Now, wait a minute. Don't start that gag about a sailor again. But I'm telling you the truth. You know these sailors? No, I, I never saw them before. But I'd know them if I saw them again. They're from the Pennsylvania. How do you know? Oh, I saw it on their cat. Where did you see these men? Well... I met Mac at 6th and Main about 8.30 Saturday night, and we were going to get our girlfriends and go on to the 808 Club later. Mac had been drinking a little. Was he I'm... drunk? Not when I saw him last, but he was still drinking. Were the sailors drunk? Well, I don't know. They they seemed to be. Were they with Mac? Not exactly, but they were at the bar and right next to us. Mm -hmm. What made you notice them particularly? Well, when we started into the bar, they were leaning against the building at 6th and Main. I noticed that one of them had a, on a gold chain and a watch charm. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, you see, I used to be in the Navy, and I know that there are regulations against wearing jewelry like that with regulation blues. Oh, I see. Then what? Well, we went down into the bar, and these two fellows came in a few minutes later. Mac was standing there getting some money out of his wallet, and these two fellows were standing right alongside drinking. 
I saw them looking at his money. How much did he have? Oh, I'd say twenty-five or thirty dollars. What pocket did he carry his money in? Well, it was the inside breast pocket of his coat. He always kept his wallet there. Did you leave there with McLaughlin? Yeah, but uh, I left him at the corner. Did you see these sailors again? Yeah. They followed us out of the bar, and the last I saw of them, they were about ten feet behind Mac as he crossed the main, going toward Hill where he'd parked his car. Why didn't you do something about it? Well, it never occurred to me that there was anything out of the ordinary about the sailors. There were lots of other men from the fleet around there. Would you recognize these men again? Any time. Well, you'll get a chance to do it. We're going to take you on board to Pennsylvania and let you try it. Captain Kilpatrick? No, these are only the men who answered the general description your witness gave of the men he saw. I see. And these men all had shore leave Saturday night? Yes. Did our men start checking the fingerprints? They're doing that now, down in the personnel office. Well, we're ready any time you are, Captain. We're ready now. All right. Douglas, take the front rank first, and let's see if you can pick out your men. How many men here, Captain? About 200. What's the matter, Doug? Is this one of them? No, sir, I, I don't believe it is. Be mighty sure before you identify anybody. I will, sir. I see your partner signaling to you from the other end of the line. Yes, I see him. I'll go see what he wants. Keep looking, Doug. Okay. What's on your mind, Geezy? Oh, not a great deal. None of the fingerprints Kilpatrick gave us checked with the ones we found on the wind wing of McLaughlin's car. None of them? No, nope. but Douglas is positive. The men he saw was McLaughlin are from the Pennsylvania. Yeah, but they may have been wearing wrong hat bands purposely. Yeah, maybe. Uh Douglas is almost through the last line. They better be getting back. Well, Douglas, you find them? They're not in these lines, Lieutenant. Are these all the men on board who went ashore Saturday night, Captain? Yes. Well, are there any more men aboard we haven't seen? There are about 30 cooks and bakers in the galley and the bake shop. May we take a look at them? Certainly. Now, Douglas, are you still sure those men wore hats with Pennsylvania on them? I'm positive, Lieutenant Sanderson. All right. We'll see if they're in this new bunch. The galley's right here. Big shop adjoins. Yeah. All men who were ashore Saturday night form a line along the tables there. Yeah, looks like about everybody went to town Saturday. We had two days leave for the holiday. Look them over, Doug. Ah, I'm beginning to get awfully fed up with this case, Sandy. Yeah, you and me both. Uh-oh. Looks like Doug spotted somebody. This one up and Doug? Yes, sir. This is the man who wore the watch chain. What's your name? David Rudolph, seaman, second class, mess cook, sir. Fall out and report to the executive office. Aye, aye, sir. The rest of you men, back to work. You see the other one in this bunch, Douglas? No, sir, I don't. Well, we'll find out from this bird, Rudolph, who he was. Yeah, we hope. We haven't any real proof that Rudolph is involved in this. We'll soon find out. Uh, this is my office here. Well, Hopkins, through checking the personnel cards? Yep. We checked them twice. Here's the name of the man we're looking for. His print on this card matches the one we got off that wind wing on McLaughlin's car. Let's see it. Hmm. There you are, Captain. David Rudolph. questioning you for three hours. I'm beginning to get fed up with your denials of having been seen in that bar with McLaughlin. We know you were there. We know you were seen leaving up at the same time. And we know you were seen walking up the street behind him. And, as a matter of fact, practically in his company. I don't know anything about it. How'd your fingerprints get on the wind wing of his car? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to give you one more chance to come clean, Rudolph. Who was with you in that bar? Nobody. Hmm. What pocket did McLaughlin put his wallet in? In his breast pocket. Oh, so you saw where he had his wallet, but you weren't in the bar, were you? All right. All right, I was there. But I didn't kill McLaughlin. Who else was with you? Bill Asbel. You ready to tell us about it? Yeah, sure, why not? All right. Start at the beginning. Well, Bill and me started to have a good time over the holidays. We got to six in May, and well, we were just about broke. 
saw these two birds, Douglas and McLaughlin, go down to the bar, and we figured maybe they had a little dough on them. We could slip it out of the pockets, and if they started anything, we'd slug them and swear they made a pass at us. When we got down in the bar... This is my round, sir. Besides, I want to get changed for this 20. Uh, two more beers, please. <laughs> Hiya, pal. <laughs> hey, you look like uh, you've been in the Navy. I have. <laughs> How'd you know? Oh, uh, something about a Navy man. You can always spot him. That's so? <laughs> you been in the Navy long? Yeah, just long enough to know you can't get back into the ship if you're broke. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hey, how's about a little drink, huh? Oh, no thanks. I'm drinking beer. I got a date later. Got a date? Oh, it'll wait. Come on, have a drink with us. Oh, no thanks. Besides, I think you've shipped on about enough. <laughs> oh, I know. Come on, be smart. Come on, I'll buy you a beer. Oh, all right. Let's get it over with. Hey, wait up. Bring us some more beer. Come on, get a move on. Then we left the bar right behind this guy, and we followed him up the street. And when we got to Pushing Square, where he parked his car, we gave him a big story about having to get out to see a friend of ours out there on Westmoreland. And we got him to agree to drive us out there. He said that his girlfriend lived out there anyway. So. How'd you happen to pick out that spot? Well, Asbel suggested it. He'd been there before. He knew about this vacant lot, see, and the pepper tree and all. Mm-hmm. And then what happened? Well, I pretended I was too drunk to stand up, and this McLaughlin guy got out to help me, and we got hold of him, got him over that tree, and let him have it. How much money did you get? Oh, I, I don't know. Asbel got most of it. I, I didn't get... but. Five or six bucks. You killed a man for six dollars? Well, that was the only way we had of getting it. Hey, look here. Tell me something. How'd you guys find out he was robbed? We left some money in his wallet. Well, in the first place, you put the wallet back in his hip pocket. He always carried it in his breast pocket. Yeah. I remember that now. And in the second place, we found a green pepper tree leaf in that wallet. You see, Rudolph... It's little things like pepper tree leaves that hang guys like you. We have heard in a most dramatic fashion, friends, of the fate of a young man who thought he was too old to listen to the advice of others. Truth of the matter is, common sense folk are never too old to learn from the experience of others. And that explains why hundreds of California motorists are being won over each day to the practical wisdom of powering their cars with Rio Grande cracked gasoline. The experience of officials of all divisions of government, cities, counties, the state of California, and the federal government is that this great gasoline gives to their emergency equipment a quicker start, never faltering acceleration, maximum speed, and greater reserve power at a lower cost for each mile. Visit the nearest red and white Rio Grande station tomorrow. Take on a tank full of Rio Grande cracked, and you too will go on record as an intelligent buyer, a thinking motorist who demands and gets police car performance. And now, Chief Davis. Fortunately, Rudolph and Aspill are not typical of the Navy. Rudolph must have fought things over in jail, for he changed his story many times finally involving completely his companion, Aspill. Both men were brought to trial and found guilty, and sentenced to prison where they are finding very definitely that crime does not pay. Thank you, Chief Davis. Attention all cars, a cancellation of broadcast 222 regarding a stolen car. This car is located in San Pedro. The owner found murdered. Suspects in this case are now in custody. That's all. Rosenquist. Frederick Lindsley bidding you right for Rio Grande.